Hello everyone out there, I'm Matt Hurst, aka The Brew Noob, and I am broadcasting today. Uh, it is Happy National Beer Day. Uh, I'm broadcasting because, uh, of course, it is National Beer Day, and also because a lot of people forget about the uh, the true meaning of the holiday, and that is, uh, today we celebrate the end of the Prohibition. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, actually, this uh, doesn't celebrate the repeal of the 21st Amendment, which is different. That's a different day. It comes later in 1933. Um, we actually celebrate uh, a law that went into effect on this day that allowed brewers to uh, brew 3.2% beer. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting tidbit of history. Uh, and to celebrate, I thought it would make sense to drink Prohibition Ale by Speakeasy Brewery. Now, this is actually the very first beer that Speakeasy Brewery put out way back in 1997. Uh, as far as I know, it follows something similar to a pre-Prohibition type recipe, although um, it should be noted that in spite of today's holiday, this is a much stronger beer than what would have been allowed on uh, on not repeal day, but you know the end of prohibition. This is a 6.1% uh, beer according to their label. So we're going to go by that, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and start drinking. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free uh, to post something right here, and I'll do my best to answer your questions as we drink this. So cheers. Uh, yeah, thought this might be an appropriate beer. Um, this is actually one of, I've only had this a couple times before, uh, and I love those eyes, they look like they're looking right at you no matter where you put it in the room. Knock it up, now it looks like it's moving away. Alright, so, we're going to do a proper beer pour so you can enjoy the, the beautiful color with my uh, favorite Dr. Ivo Robotnik. Give you a little uh, comparison for the color. Alright. I like to pour my beer because I like to see uh, a lot of gas, so I'm, I'm okay pouring it straight on. I know some of you guys like to do it. You see, that's a, that's a lot. <laughs> I probably could have rehearsed doing this, but that's fine. Uh, so we're going to wait a minute on this, but you can already see in there, it's got a beautiful copper color, and it's got kind of a... I, I see people say this is a white head. To me, you can... and this is not a color correction thing. This is... To me, that looks like a very tan, foamy head to me. Um, nothing too, nothing too thick, just nice and bubbly. I know this isn't a, uh, this is not a super carbonated beer by any stretch, but let that we're gonna let that mellow out for a second, and uh, you know, take take a minute here while while we're waiting on that to settle in to uh, answer any questions you have. If you think of anything, that's right. that's better. Feel free to uh, leave a comment. I'll uh, try to read them at uh, you know your questions or comments as we go along. And uh, thanks for joining me today. Yeah. Uh, so it, this is definitely a uh, big holiday. Obviously, uh, I was queued in like some of you when I saw uh, Untapped had its badge going up. Uh, if you haven't unlocked it already, check in on Untapped. Uh, and while you're there. Feel free to follow uh, me, the Brew Noob. That's Brew Noob, N-O-O-B, just like it says uh, down down there. If you flip around the comments and stuff like that. Uh, but of course, here uh, using we're using our Twitter login, and Twitter is where the Brew Noob started. Uh, you know, I've always believed in um, keeping beer reviews short and sweet. Uh, so we'll do our best to talk about the holiday today rather than my personal thoughts on beer because in my experience beer is a very subjective uh, taste. Some things you like, some things you don't. Uh, I, I'm very fond of this beer. Um, let's talk a little bit about it while it's resting just just for fun. Um, yeah, there's uh, very little information on the bottle. Very beautiful stylized logo. Really great artwork. Our good friends at uh, Speakeasy. Um, this Oddly enough, some people call this a, a red ale, uh, which is unusual because uh, mine was bottled here in November, but actually this is one of their year-round beers, especially as this was one of the first beers they put out. 
Uh, we'll talk some more about the taste on a little bit. I just thought this was an appropriate beer to drink, knowing the history of the Prohibition. And speaking of which, we're going to top this off here. And let's talk a little bit about the Prohibition while, while this is finished. Oh, that, that looks beautiful on camera, doesn't it? Some beers just look good. You gotta love that. So, craft beer does have a very strong relationship with the Prohibition. Uh, in fact, it's actually craft beer, the Craft Beer Association, which uh, created National Beer Day that we're now promoting and celebrating. Uh, there are several beer holidays. You probably wouldn't notice that, but it's really convenient for PR and marketing people like me. In any case, um, yeah, so craft beer is strongly tied to the history of the Prohibition, but not in the way you might think. Um, you know, you occasionally read history lessons about how uh, craft beer, you know, that before the Prohibition, there were thousands of breweries across the United States. And some people, uh, you know, note that after the Prohibition, that there were fewer breweries, especially in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, prior to the craft beer revolution. But uh, I did a little research today on, on this subject, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. But first, cheers to Tasty Beers. Uh, hope you're raising a glass wherever you are, if you're watching this on the other end of the, uh, of the screen. Cheers, and happy National Beer Day. I got a little foam. Uh, yeah, this is a great beer. Um, really easy to drink. Very, very complex. It has um, a whole... I did my research. It does have a bunch of hops. To me, it tastes kind of floral or citrusy, which is kind of a combination you see a lot. But I get a lot of, lot of, lot of citrus. I get like grapefruit, kind of like slightly acidic tasting hops out of this. Uh, but nothing overwhelming. It's very light. Almost, it's almost as light and drinkable as a, as a session IPA, which I kind of like. Really, really solid taste. This is a good, good craft beer. That color also adds a little bit of the, you know, like sweet, malty, roasty. I mean, you can just see right there visually. There's a lot going on, going on underneath that that foamy head. It's actually, it looks a little bit more muddy because of the fact that we're looking up, but this is this is crystal clear to me, straight through. I wonder if I can, you can't really see it, thanks to our good friend Dr. Ivo Robotnik. Never afraid to get geeky here on the Brew Noob. Anyway, um, pretty solid beer. I'm not going to waste your time drinking all the way through. I just want to talk a little bit about holiday. So, I did a little research on this today, and... You know, you, typically you see there's some estimate around 2,500 to 3,000 breweries open prior to the Prohibition or at the turn of the century. Somewhere in there, it's always a fuzzy number up in the air, but um, one thing that's a lot less noted is that within one year, within one year of this holiday we celebrate today, by the end of that year, as a matter of fact, there were already 750 breweries back open. Now... That's not usually the number you hear associated with this. Usually you hear that after the Prohibition, there were as few as 50 breweries across the United States, and most of them were consolidated around major players. And that's historically true, and actually, in some ways, it's still true now. If you take out the number of breweries, the, the few breweries that control most beer distributed in the U.S., and that's actually the key to why this is uh, more widespread. Uh, you will, and this is the kind of day we do see press releases about that, but... I just wanted to mention that there were approximately 750 breweries that were open by the end of 1933, at which point was immediately after the repeal of the 18th Amendment with the 21st Amendment, which, again, another great brewery, uh, but the 21st Amendment. What's remarkable and why we get to this idea that the prohibition was not great to brewing is that a lot of other trends like uh, the nationalization, the post-war economy, uh, changes in, in how marketing and advertising worked did lead to an increased consolidation. And that it does, it is reflected in the fact that in the 70s and 80s, 
that it's estimated there are as few as 50 to 80 breweries in the United States, and that actually even counts uh, breweries owned by the same brewers. So if you're, let's say, uh, the largest brewer in the United States still is Anheuser Busch, they have about they have about a dozen breweries across the United States. They're actually that way they're evenly distributed. Um, that would be counted as 12 breweries, not one brewer. Uh, so, you know, you, the math is a little fuzzy, but I think it's really clear that um, the prohibition itself did not kill crap, the, the, the diversity in, in beer. So, of course, craft beer is a new category that, came, that comes in later. What it did do, however, was change the way that law was uh, sold and distributed in what's called the three-step flow, and that has a lot more to do with that consolidation. It's, uh, it's largely the combination of the brewers themselves doing a better job being national beer brands and they're uh, increasing their, their own distribution methods and promotion methods, but also the, um, this creation of after the prohibition creating the distributor relationships, and I am in no way attacking uh, that, but it is, it is a very, it's still an important political and economic issue to discuss on, pro, on this, uh, this day. Um, I think it's a, a big reason why it's a little bit overlooked. So, you know, for a long time, uh, distributors did not uh, encourage some of these smaller breweries and really embraced the bigger and more consolidated breweries across the United States, which for a while made it a lot harder for craft breweries to get sold in grocery stores, gas stations. In New York, we have bodegas, convenience stores, uh, everywhere that beer is sold. It did make it uh, more difficult for a long time. You know, fortunately, we are, we are uh, at a place where craft beer is so popular that uh, many more distributors are willing to embrace um, breweries like Speakeasy and their Prohibition uh, Ale, which uh, debuted in 1997, and that has helped um, you know, the spread of, of craft beer and the diversity. In fact, it's now estimated that uh, there are more craft breweries. Um, approximately, last time I checked, it was about uh, 3,200 plus breweries in the United States, which would actually be more than we had prior to Prohibition. Uh, it may be historically high. Um, you know, it's hard to get good estimates uh, from the late 19th and early 20th century about that specific kind of business. So, cheers. And that 3,200 breweries actually means that the United States has the most breweries of any country in the entire world, something we should be enormously proud of. And I dare say we have the greatest diversity of styles of beer. Um, I don't know if there's one specific American style the same way we talk about uh, other nationalities and their, and their notable styles that they've honed and crafted over time. Maybe that will change, maybe it won't. But on National Beer Day... I think our uh, diversity and the amount of variety uh, that's available to uh, the consumer and the beer lover like you and me is incredible. And I think that's something worth drinking to. So, cheers. Of course, here at the Brew Noob, that uh, diversity is something that we uh, know and love. It's actually my favorite part of a beer is the variety. Um, many of you have probably noted I don't uh, tend to favor any one style, so um, this happens to be a particularly hoppy beer. Um, you know, I think taste is a very subjective thing, and the best way you can embrace and celebrate today's holiday is to drink whatever you like, or better yet, try something new. Um, there's definitely a lot of depth out there with that with 3,200 breweries, and there's a lot of creativity as well going on. Uh, that's part of the beauty of, of craft beer and um, you know find find things that you like maybe there's some taste like better or worse for me I don't remember the last time I had this beer so I thought it'd be really good by the way look at that beautiful lacing on the glass this is something that I was reading that prohibition is prohibition ale is particularly well known for so that just that's just uh, a nice visual really tells you something about a that it's a clean glass but also B that it's a very specific um, quality to this beer. Well, I won't bore you uh, by drinking the entire beer. 
I haven't seen any questions or comments yet on the feed, but for everyone who has watched or watches this uh, a little bit later, you know, I just want to say thanks for joining me. Um, we'll keep on trying to do lots of live streams uh, and experiment here at the Brew Noob. Uh, you can always follow me on Twitter. And that's the best way to keep track of some of these, uh, uh, all the different things that we're uh, doing, whether it's on our blog, uh, these videos like this, or, um, you know, some of the uh, interactions that we like to do with our community of, of beer geeks like you and me. Um, of course, you can also read our blog at The Brew Noob. It's a great way. Uh, we'll definitely be posting this video, uh, if we can, uh, there a little bit later. And, um, you know, be sure to follow us on all our channels if you're on Untapped, as I said earlier. Uh, feel free to connect with The Brew Noob. Uh, it's Brew Noob. If you've, if you've actually gotten this far, you know how to spell it, so so you can always copy that. Don't, don't worry about uh, the spelling. But... Um, Check in. Uh, you've got a couple more hours, so that's in your favor. And get that uh, get that National Beer Day badge. Uh, I already did drinking this beer, so enjoy that. And uh, you know, thanks again for watching. Uh, hope to talk with you soon and see you on the other end of the series of tubes. So cheers, one more time on National Beer Day. All right.